You're listening to Real Estate Investing Talks, a Simply Do It podcast. Your journey to success in real estate investment starts right here, right now. Here's Danny Bate Orr. And uh, today's topic is kind of mitigate some of the concerns um, that investors have about the whole concept of investing remotely. So when I say investing remotely, that just for me means anything that it's not in your backyard, so to speak, right? Maybe anything that it's, let's say, significantly far from your house, maybe uh, uh, um, um, significantly, uh, you know, um, how to, you know, to invest in other parts of the country, other in other parts of the world. Obviously, people are doing it. We all have concerns about it. And, um, you know, we always feel that uh, if we don't know the area, it's completely whack. I had a conversation with an uh, investor this week, and most of the things he brought up were, how do I know that I'm not buying a house in the middle of nowhere, so to speak? Okay, how do I know that? Um, so I want, I want to say this. When I got started, which was 2002, seems like a long time ago, the entire internet was, was different, right? Google was a startup in 2002. I don't think they even had Google Maps at the time. MapQuest, I think, was the, 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 the application we were using. Um, no Zillow, no Realtor.com, not, none of those websites, tools, uh, no um, online uh, data from the county, public records. It was all messy and harder. I mean, it's only, what, 14 years ago, 16 years ago, 15, 16 years ago, but a completely you know, different investing environment from someone who's uh, investing remotely. Now, what I did, and actually I lived in Tel Aviv, Israel at the time, bought uh, my first house in Phoenix, Arizona, and I had you know, very uh, young guy, 25, 26-ish, maybe 27, um, not a lot of support systems around me doing my first investment. So first of all, I want to say that I got to this, the whole concept of investing remotely, out of a pure necessity. Nothing else made sense to me because I've done some stocks and options, um, and, you know, and local real estate didn't really make sense to me. But out of state, out of the country, did make perfect sense to me. So the whole concept for me came out of pure necessity. I always felt when I started maturing as an investor, maturing as an individual, that I owe it to myself to make the best decision for me, you know, for uh, investment wise, when it comes to investing in, you know, investing altogether and investing in real estate, right? So it's maybe easier, easier uh, uh, said than done, but that's where, where my, you know, background or my uh, um, kind of the core um, springboard to investing altogether. Now, so when I started this completely different environment than when you are here today, I mean, in, in today we can easily, find information about the property, the owners, the uh, county records, the map, the satellite view, the street view, oh my God, map, street, satellite, just this. Um, uh, we can maybe research about the neighborhood. We can research different websites to gather information, you know, on the, on the street, on the neighborhood, on the city, on the county, on the, on the metro. So it, 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 there, it, it does require legwork. And by the way, thank you for a question, Nears, uh, Near, I will take them obviously in a minute. Uh, when I'm done, I'll be happy to take your and other qu other people's questions. And uh, hello, offer, good to see you. Um, so when I got started with it, it, this information was not there. Okay, the fear, you know, was still in me, as it, as I see in today's, you know, when uh, investors that I work with today also have the fear in them. Of the whole concept of investing remotely. So what can you do? Okay, a couple of things you can do. Uh, some are easier, some are more difficult, some are just time consuming, but definitely a couple of things you can do. So first of all, once you decide where you want to invest, I know there's part of it, you know, the decision, when you will go to different parts of the U.S., because that's what I know, that's what I'm going to talk about. And you think about investing in a big metro, um, let's just take uh, Dallas, Texas, right? When you go to Dallas and you see on the map the address of a specific house or even a neighborhood or even a region, it's very easy to tell this is not in the middle of nowhere, like the conversation I had with a guy, um, you know, uh, earlier this week. So it's very easy to tell you're not buying in the middle of nowhere. The best tool for the any investor 
especially the beginner who's very afraid or very concerned or very not trusting, which is all fine and, you know, and, and makes sense, uh, to get over the obstacles of investing remotely, in my opinion, the best tool you can do, hop on a plane and go see what you're buying, okay? Especially if you're a beginner. I know a lot of investors don't want to do that because it's either a significant trip, let's say from Tel Aviv to Phoenix, or even if a significant trip from someone who lives in the States, you know, and they want to go from San Francisco to Dallas, it, you know, it means a, a day or two on the road. People, you know, for those of, you know, for the guys from Tel Aviv, it sounds like, uh, why wouldn't you do that? It's easy. From the guys in Silicon Valley or San Francisco, I know well they're too busy. They don't want to try to take the time. But if you can't do that, that will help you significantly. Because then you will go, listen, you're not going to know the area in one day. Ain't going to happen, even not even one week, okay? But the fact that you are traveling to, let's say, the Dallas Metro, and you're going to see four or five houses, or six, or three, and spend there a day or two, will give you the comfort zone that you're not buying in the middle of nowhere, that you're not buying a piece of crap, that you're not buying, you know, without completely, you know, understanding. It makes it feasible. You can touch houses. You can see houses. You can see what you're buying. You can meet the people we're working with in order to feel comfortable with their skill set, with their communication, with their professionalism, in order to execute a purchase. And any time you're going to go out there, you're going to build your confidence in the whole process that we are, you know, that we're doing here, investing remotely. So the best thing for you, especially if you are concerned, is, you know, is to hop on a plane, spend the time, make the effort at least once. I would say go every time you're buying, but at least for the first time, it will help you not only jump over that hurdle of, of, of uh, concern and fear, but it will also make you a better investor. You're going to be spending a day or two in a local market, um, getting to see what, what, what you're buying, what you're investing, the area, here is the school, here's a new center, here's a new road, here's this, here's things that, you know, when you're out there, you're feeding your brain with things that are going on in the area that are kind of making you a little bit more relaxed about the whole concept of investing, okay? So number one you can do is, tra is travel, right? By the way, when you travel, usually here's what's going to happen. You're going to go, let's say, to Dallas. You spend a day or two there. And here's what you're going to, you're going to find out. Nothing. This is as going to be as boring as your own neighborhood if you live in the States or as nice, you know, or, or as any other U.S. neighborhood. I could probably take you right now and put you on a plane with, in blindfolded, drop you somewhere, you know, middle America in a nice area, and you would not have an idea where you are because they all look just the same. Because when you drive, here's what you're going to see. Here is the Starbucks, one, two, three of them, four of them. Here is the supermarket, whatever local chain they use. Here is Target, Walmart, right? All of those things, they're just going to be, and all the other chains, you're going to see most of them again and again and again. This is how America is very much duplicating itself. By the way, when you go out there and you realize that, that's a good thing. You're actually saying, okay, I'm buying in a good area, in a nice area, you know, nothing special, nothing that makes me want to be worried about, on the contrary. You know, the same kind of pattern, perfect. So that's usually what happens when you travel out there, you know, to any market, you know, USA, any metro USA or most metro, assuming you're not going to specific small towns, you know, in the middle of nowhere, that's a whole different, you know, story. But when you go to those metros with big metros around the country, that's what you're going to see. Um, I want to I tell you uh, um, uh, two stories about uh, two of my investors who went and they took my advice and, fly, and flew out there. One came all the way from Tel Aviv. And one came all the way from, uh, um, from Silicon Valley, from San Mateo. Both are very good friends. The first guy who went from Tel Aviv, been, you know, he's been uh, concerned about investing for some time. So he eventually decides he wants to do it. He's been talking to me for a few years, coming back and forth, back and forth. And then he decides, I'm going to do it. He calls me up and says, you know what, Danny? Here's what I'm going to do. What do you think about me flying out there to Nashville, Tennessee, and spending a week there? And I told him immediately, because I knew by then he's a very concerned investor, a super nice guy, that that would be, probably be the best thing he can do. And he decided that he's booking, you know, a flight. And he's not going for just one day. He's going for a whole week. And I told him two I think I gave him two warnings. I told him, listen, two things are probably going to happen. I have a feeling that you may want to stay there longer than one week because it's a fun city, it's a fun place, and you may not be able to accomplish everything uh, you do, and he said, that's a possibility, uh, you know, uh, it could happen. 
And the second thing I told him, I know you were planning on going out there and buying one house. My guess is you're actually going to go out and buy at least two, if not three. And he said, nah, you, you don't know me. I may not even, I'm probably not even going to buy one, maybe one. Here's what happened. He went out there, met the team, started saying, you know, looking at houses, analyzing, making offers, going out again. He spent a full week going around, really exploring the metro real estate wise, having fun, you know, in, in Nashville itself during the evening because it's a fun city and going out to see houses during the day, making offers, analyzing, going back. A week wasn't enough. He actually ended up uh, extending it for another week and stayed there two weeks. And as you suspect or maybe believe, he came out with uh, two, two accepted offers by the time he left you know, the Nashville area and gone, gone back to Israel. And he bought those two houses, you know, there's no surprises. They're rented, everything is fine. The guy's back in Israel already talking about the next one. But that was something that he's, he's he, and we kept talking while he was in Nashville. He said, it's probably the best thing I've done is to go uh, out here, feel comfortable. I, you know, I like the area. It's a nice area. I like the team. That really builds my confidence, confidence about investing here. So that's one guy. The other guy from San Mateo, a very, very good friend, one of my best friends, he flew out to Fort Worth, Texas. So he made an offer first. Then when he got accepted, he went in a scheduled, you know, a flight on a short, you know, like within a day or, or two to three days to meet the inspector while he was there and my team. So they went out to the house for the inspection. And he calls me after their, they've been through the inspection, you know, been through everything. He's done. He's just about to leave. Go ahead, head back to the airport. He calls me up and say, you're not going to believe this. I say, what's going on? He says, I am shocked that I'm buying this $215,000 home in a very good part of DFW, north of Fort Worth, um, in a good school area. And this house is amazing. It's a beautiful, I think like four, two and a half, four bedrooms, two and a half bathroom, two car garage, beautiful community, big backyard. The house looks really, you know, nice. He says, I can't believe I live in San Mateo in a crappy, you know, little house that's worth maybe 1.5 or even more. And I'm buying here for 215, something amazing, amazing. He says, I want to move here, right? We don't usually buy houses that we necessarily want to move there, move into them. But he was shocked at how a $215,000 house, you know, in a nice community, nice area, by far, you know, it looks much, much better than the house uh, that he lives in in San Mateo. He actually hated that fact, right? But, you know, he knows it is what it is. So this is an example, two examples how our investors sometimes travel. By the way, 85% of our investors, when we tell them, yeah, you should, you should travel, you know, they don't bother taking the time and travel out there because they're busy and life and kids and family. They don't have a time. And I, we fully understand that. So 85% of the investors we work with don't travel at all. And about 15% do travel. But, you know, we always think it's a good thing. So travel, you know, is one thing. Second thing, you know, we just want to make sure you have all your ducks in a row, right? So, you know, you got a good agent that tells you, you know, can tell you whatever you want about the area. Uh, to provide you with the answers and then maybe a good property manager you can trust that will also uh, tell you about the, you know, the, uh, the area and, and, and uh, answer your questions about a specific area where the house is located. So those two things you probably want uh, to make sure you have an inspection done, right? I'm, assume, uh, I'm assuming most of you who are not working with us are doing an inspection. If you're not, I think inspections are too cheap to, uh, to skip. So do an inspection. It's a third person that's coming to a house, right? So um agent and property manager uh, maybe property manager depending on on your on your relationship and uh, an inspector and then an appraisal comes to the house if you're buying with a mortgage all of those you know those are four at least four people that are coming to your house so you get your own due diligence plus trusted teams that are going to the house and they're each going to have their independent opinion and will tell you what they think about the house the area etc so that helps build that confidence and making sure you're using them. Don't skip inspections. They're too cheap to skip for the amount of house we're buying, obviously. Okay. Um, and um, of course, the, the, one of the biggest challenges uh, that I'm seeing with investors who are um, working by themselves, they go out and they just randomly pick an agent or randomly pick a, you know, or somewhat randomly pick a property management company. The problem I've seen with this is most agents you're going to, if you're going to call someone today as an agent and you say, oh, I want to buy a rental property. Can you help me? What do you think the answer is going to be? Of course, right? 
from their standpoint, buying a primary residence for their client who wants to live in and buying an investment property, it's pretty much the same process, right? Well, I beg to differ. I think there's a, there's a lot of similarities and there are a lot of things that are different. And if the, um, a, the agent who doesn't know investment mindset and doesn't know how to analyze properly what to look for in investment property on multiple facets, they're not going to lead you into the right house, right? So that's very important to, to know. Second thing, I think uh, uh, regarding property managers, if you're just going to call someone randomly, or, you know, even you're going to call five you know, property management companies and pretty quickly you're going to ask them what your fees are. And you may end up uh, um, going on with the one who is charging 5% there's a very good chance you will end up you know, choosing the wrong one because from my experience, most property management, good property management companies out there charge anywhere from seven to 10% in official rate, right? And if you're going with a guy who's, you know, is a little bit out of that uh, um, range, I would be very suspicious. This is a, a clear uh, uh, situation of someone, not a clear, most likely of someone potentially either cutting corners or not doing the full job they, they're supposed to do. So don't, you know, when you choose property managers, the fee is not, is the last thing you should be worried about. Because if you're, you know, think about it for a second, you're renting a house and for a thousand dollars and one property management is charging 9% and another one is charging 6%. Okay. Right. The difference per month, it's 30 bucks, right? It's not, it's not worth 30 bucks. I mean, it's not small, you know, nickel and dime, but it's not worth the amount of risk that the, the guy who's only charging uh, 6% would probably present you. Now, if you know they're good and that that's their fee and you, you trust them and you think they can handle everything, that's fine. I'm not saying, you know, you shouldn't, but just be aware that property manager will charge a lower fees. You know, it's just so rare that there's probably something, you know, going on there. I, for me, it's immediately fishy, fishy situation, but I'm open to, to, you know, open to investigate further to see if those are um, reliable ones. So don't be attracted to the fees only. Um, so we talked about traveling out there, making sure multiple parties, independent parties go to the property um, to inspect and to check uh, with, you know, make sure you you got to check uh, um, good, reliable, you know, have the proper agent right in mind and not just an agent because they seem nice on the phone that's just not good enough uh, and of course uh, um, um, don't choose uh, property managers just because they're cheap that's for me um, not a reason to select one it will maybe save you a few bucks and cost you many many more dollars um, and lastly the one thing that we've been doing and i think this is exactly what we're trying to to the added value that we try to bring is if you work with a network like us like simply do it then what's going to happen is this. We vet agents. We vet property managers. I mean, for me, vetting a property manager, it's a process that, you know, many hours. Vetting, a, you know, a, a, an agent, again, a process of multiple hours. For my experience of after being involved in the transaction of more than 3,500 rental properties, you know what to ask. You know who's the serious one. You know what to, you know, how to 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 uh, uh to drill down the problem to id the issues to see what works who you know who works who you know who doesn't work up until today you know over what uh so many years of more you know more than 15 years of you know, being involved in real estate or helping others i had to let go one property management company one the only reason I had to let them go is not because they were criminals or crooks, not at all. Those are very nice guys. Actually, they're trying to court us all over again to bring our business back to them. The only reason I had to let them go is because their working standards were not good enough for what we expect. And we had a lot of complaints. And when we had a lot of complaints and they didn't you know, step up and fix those things, we had to let them go. And they are good people, you know, honest people. Nothing in, in the sense of doing, you know, uh, fishy stuff at all, just not good enough for our standard. They could pass, they could work, just not good enough for us. So when we find agents and property managers, we vet them, we do the following. First of all, we train them. So the agents know how to look you know, at the rental properties, what the investors are looking for, how to work with investors. So we don't just take random people, you know, that we think are okay. We take random people, not random. We find good people. We check them, we vet them, we train them, and then we ongoingly work with them to support them, to help them become better. The property management companies, again, we do a lot of vetting. That's a very lengthy process. 
And once we find the right company, not because they're cheap, because they have the proper processes, experience, and so on in place to support our transaction, we will want to choose them. And we go in with our buying power and we ask for more. We ask for more services. We ask for a better fee for you. Anything that we can use the buying power to negotiate and provide you with more services, more fees, perfect. It's a win-win. So when you work with us, you get all this you know, uh, infrastructure that helps you execute purchases, knowing you, you're not just an individual buyer with one property or maybe two properties with one agent or one property management company. You belong to a big account. Usually, we are the biggest account with the property management company. So when you talk to the property manager, they know you belong to Simply Do It. It already puts you in a higher level. It's like a VAP by, 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 uh, by uh, you know, just by association, right? And if you have an issue with a property management company and you're one of our clients, and you call us up and you say, hey, I need help. I need to, you know, to, to think, you know, to, to check something with you before I respond back to the property manager, or I need you to step in and help you, help me resolve the problem. We step in and resolve the problem. It's easy for us to do because although we are not their employers, because I'm not, you know, I'm not involved with the company, you know, as, as, a, as, a, as, a, um, as an owner or anything like that, but we are their biggest account. They consider us, you know, when someone calling from Simply Do It, it's like the boss is on the line because we bring them so much work. So they are very much open to solving problems, doing things out of their uh, comfort zone in order to see the big picture with us to make sure our you know, uh, clientele, our investors are happy. So when you're doing this, remember, traveling is very important, doesn't have to be, right? Working with the, with the right property managers and agents on the ground and doing inspection, all very important. And when you work with a network like us, this is already built into the system. Some of those things are operating well in the background without you even knowing the agent is already talking to the property manager and the agent already you know, informing the, the, uh, um, the lender that you're under contract and all those things, you know, they're working in the background very smoothly and it's, you know, by design, it's not by, you know, uh, by chance or by luck because we make sure all those functions, they know each other well, at least the main ones, and then they can operate, you know, communicate better on your behalf. That really helps or helps preventing from things falling through the cracks. And we don't want that, right? That's what we're trying to avoid. So um, those are the things that I wanted to say about buying remotely. Uh, um, I'll take, I see that there are already questions coming up. I'll take them. If you have any more questions, you know, regarding the topic or other topics, by all means, post them here and I will address them one by one. Um, and I'm just going to say, if you scroll to the beginning of the notes or the comments, you'll see two links, one on an interview we did yesterday, I did with one of our investors who talks about the experience of working with us from his perspective, from his end, uh, you know, very nice guy, very uh, intelligent, had a lot to share. So I really appreciate him, t him taking the time. I think he's here as well uh, on the session. I'm not sure if it's still here or not. He was. Um, that's one link. The second link is a, uh, the ebook, a free ebook. You can download, easy read, easy to follow. Very logic, very common sense, very step by step outline. So someone who wants to go through the through the process and, and, and kind of get a little bit more clear process wise how it works, what to do, etc. It's not a checklist. It's a, it a, truly is an ebook. Um, you know, you're most welcome to download it. Both of those links are. If you scroll to the top, you'll see them. One is a case study, one is an ebook. Now let's see the questions that were come that uh, came in. Question number one: When investing remotely, how do you pick crew for a flip? Near excellent question. This is a very, very, very challenging process. It's all about vetting, 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 and vetting. So there's not an easy solution. There's not like one, two, three, and you're good. Every time I have to pick a new crew for a flip. It's a whole, you know, it takes me uh, many hours until I choose one, one uh, party involved. So I can tell you, for example, next week, Sunday, I'm flying over to Tampa. I have multiple projects going on there, but one project is a, it's a big, uh, it's a very big project. It's a, we're converting um, a school from the 1920s into multiple condos, right? So it's going to be, we're already under contract. We are going to meet with between the different relevant vendors, more than 20 different vendors that are somehow related. We only need five, 
but each category, four or five, we have like four or five categories. Each category, we're going to meet with four to five different people. And that just meetings, not who we're going to, you know, take to the next level of due diligence and vetting. So this is three people next week for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, three full days, running between different vendors, meeting them, questioning them, and so on. So just to give you an example, one big project, how we go about it, and that's just tip of the iceberg of the vetting process. Okay, so not an easy solution here. Um, crime, multiple crimes websites. Uh, you just type, uh, or truly has a good, uh, uh, I think has add uh, a good uh, crime indicator. There's another website, I can't remember his name. Uh, its name, uh, you just run, you know, do crime and it will give you uh, crime statistics. Uh, maybe uh, someone else can uh, search, but there are multiple websites online that will do that. Um, Socioeconomic statistics, um, um, how do you pick your remote investment property? So demographics, um, uh, just go search demographics. Go to search by demographic by zip code. You can do um, uh, Movutu demographic and the zip code. It will give you all the demographics of the areas. Easy. That information, I mean, you got to do a little bit of search, but it's out there. Demographic, zip code, Movutu, usually, uh, one of the one that I like to use. Um, there's another one that you can compare multiple zip codes up to four. That's easy to, to use as well. Um, by the way, I want to add one more thing before I take the next question. One thing that I have noticed from a lot of investors is that they tend to do so much online analysis or, uh, or uh, ga data gathering, and they're not doing the maybe one, one of the most important things they can do. They don't call the agent and talk to him about what's going on. I'll give you an example. I, we had a session, uh, we are now doing sessions, recorded sessions with all our agents for just the past week to kind of get to, to, to have an opportunity to record them and share it with our investors, those who are buying with us, what's going on in Dallas or Nashville, etc. okay? So the Dallas guy, James and I had a session yesterday and we talked about for 20 minutes, uh, just a conversation about Dallas recorded so we can share that information with you. And he said, you know, there's an area that I like that the schools are not great. But he said it, I loved how he, he, he said it. He said, listen, Danny, I'm not a fan of the schools. I'm a huge fan of the area. So that means this is a very strong rental area. Although the schools are not amazing, they're not bad, but they're not at the top. It still makes perfect sense to go out there. A lot of us investors, me included, we go online and we search and we search and we do, we do an analysis here and Google there and Zillow there, which is all fine and Google Maps, fine. The one thing we don't tend to do enough we are on phone, on the phone, talk to the agent, see what they say. Every time that I talk to the agent, there's another gem, another information, one, two, three pieces of information that are critical to the decision, and no website will even, you know, will even record it anywhere. And that's only on the ground, boots on the ground that will tell you that. So if you're an investor and you're really stuck here in front of the screen, that's not the only place. This is a good place, but not enough. Don't forget to talk to the agents. Give them some credit. They know what they're doing, right? At least the good ones. Um, okay, moving on. Yuval is asking, you mentioned that a person was there for two weeks. Is just one to two days on a weekend enough? Yuval, I think one day is enough if you have to make it short. Um, you know, the one guy that went there for two weeks, actually went for one week and stayed another. He was just, uh, I would say, he's, he's one of my good friends. He lives in, you know, in, in Tel Aviv, in Israel. Um, but his personality is, always, you know, he told me from the first time we spoke, he said, Danny, I'm a very um, um, concerned, skeptic investor. For me to execute, there's not, I'm not going to be rushed into it. I'm going to take my time. And he really took his time. But he said, I'm, I'm the one guy who really afraid to pull the trigger. So I have to be very, 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 very comfortable with everything. And, and it took him a long time and he did execute and he felt that he needs to stay a little bit longer than, than one to two days because that's not enough. He traveled all the way from Tel Aviv. So that's what made sense to him. I don't, you know, I, I never saw anyone doing like this, uh, staying for two weeks. Usually it's a day or two. Um, I have another investor, an experienced investor, she already purchased a few properties with us. She is spending this week in Nashville because she wants to 
get things. She wants to be really focused on. She wants to get to know the market, get to know the team. But primarily, she's you saying, I for for whatever reasons, I need to buy three to four more properties as quickly as possible. I want to take the time and spend a week in Nashville, so I can actually quickly, you know, uh, um, um, execute, see the properties, and move forward. She says, from a distance, it takes me more time. Now I'm taking some time off, a week vacationing in Nashville, vacation, you know, real estate vacation. I think maybe it's a new category of vacation and I'm going to spend there. And my goal is to come out of that week with at least three properties, if not four, because I have other things in my life I have to get to and I need to take care of that before I can get to the other things. I'm not going to go into all the details. And she is also very concerned person, super analytical, maybe one of the most analytical people I've ever met from Silicon Valley, if not the, the top one. She's very detailed, very, very detailed, very, very, you know, kind of uh, looking for what can go wrong. Uh, but she's an investor. She's already has an experience of a few properties. She's buying now. We went, we were going back and forth this week uh, with the list she, you know, with the short list she gave me. What do you think about this eight or nine properties? We narrow it to to four out of those four, two were no longer relevant. We added two more. Um, so we kind of played with it and she's, she's there. She's, she's, she's running around properties on one end, some meeting offers on the other. For her, it's comfortable, you know, it's different because she's been through the process with us before. So she knows it, uh, you know, uh, you know, she knows it more closely for, on one end. On the other end, she wants to be on the ground and feel more confident. I think one of the things she learned, it's better to go and be on the ground um, and make those decisions and not do it remotely. For her, that's her personality. She's a little bit more hands-on, detailed person, so it fits her personality very well. And, and, and I'm glad she's doing it because it's very, you know, it's a good way for her to go about it. Um, so one day is enough. Two days, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's enough. Uh, if you feel that you need more, then because you're a little bit more of a concerned person, by all means, no problem. Uh, one day, okay. In case where you don't meet the team while there, because there is no time, um, I would say the chances of you not coordinating and meeting with the team are very small, because you're gonna probably plan it in advance, few days, a week. Uh, if the agent can take you for some reason or the property manager, usually there's another person involved either in the property management or supporting the agent that can show you around. Usually. You know, assuming you're not going to land in, in Dallas and say, hey, I'm at the airport, can you come pick me up, you know, out, out of nowhere, um, then, then you shouldn't be, uh, uh, there shouldn't be any problem, sorry for that, shouldn't be any problem um, um, coordinating it in advance. And between property managers and agents, usually it's not a one-man kind of a team, there are there's secondary people involved that may be a little bit in the background to us, but that, that can help you. So I don't think that's a problem. Don't surprise them. Please don't call them from the airport. I'm here. Can you pick me up? Not going to work. Okay. How do you record the visit trip as a real estate investing trip for tax purposes? You're just going to gather all your expenses on that trip. It's tax deductible. Rem put it somewhere. Remember it somewhere. And when you do your taxes at the end of the year or the, you know, uh, when the year is over, you're gonna. There is a category in your tax return for your real estate, saying that that you can say traveling expenses or something along those lines, and you just put whatever the expenses are. That's it. You know, you know, you that nowadays you don't. You know, years back, you, uh, people, you know, uh, uh, CPAs would say keep your receipts and keep your. You can't do that, but who needs that when everything is in your, in your statements from the credit card company, or you have uh, records in your email for the um, for the purchase of the you know, fly, you know, tickets and all of that. So that's easy, but that, as easy as that, don't make it complicated. Just make sure to remember to put yourself, see, here, here's what I do. I have one, one notebook. I'm a little bit old school, right? But this is a summary notebook. Every year I take, you know, every time I have something to put it, you know, that I know it's, it's all taxes related, right? But it's only important notes. So if I go to, um, 2017, there, there's this trip that I need to remember and one thing here um, and one expense that I need to remember, not real estate related. So I'm just taking notes 
how I do things. If, if I have an audit in a few years and someone asking, why did you decide to split that you know, percentage between land and, and structure? Here's where I write my notes when I make those decisions. I'm just putting it in a few words, maybe a sentence or two. If someone comes up and asks me six years ago, you said that the land is worth 23.26%, then I know why. I know. Here's why. Here's why. I'm not going to remember it, but here's why. So I have, that's the only thing that I'm using which is not online, right? Just to keep all those tax notes over here. You can do the same. Whatever. Just open that file, put this information in, you're good to go. Okay? So you volunteer, you volunteer are in, a, in competition for who's getting the most questions today. Good job, guys. I love it. I love questions. That's great. Is the Tampa project a syndication that you are arranging? In simple terms, yes. Okay. I don't know. Uh, we haven't f finished uh, all the information just yet, but that's where we're heading. It seems it most likely is going to be a syndication with loan. You know, uh, it's a 3.5 mil uh, uh, project. Uh, three and a half million dollars, probably about a million in cash and 2.5 in in uh, uh, in, uh, in a loan. If an investor travels to the area, do you meet do you meet them there? If you're asking if I'm going to meet you there, uh, we can arrange that. There's going to be a high uh, fee for it for me to come out there and, and be there. I've done that. People have paid that. Um, not too often, but it does happen. It can be done. Uh, but typically, my team on the ground, property manager and agent, will meet you there. We'll, we'll make sure. It's all coordinated. So the simple answer is yes, probably not me. Um, some, you know, special circumstances, it could be me. Unrelated questions. Do you think investing in single family homes uh, right now is as attractive as commercial properties when we, when new tax reform reduce depreciation to 25 years instead of, um, this is, a whole topic, Yuval. I'm not going to go dive into it because you're already 45 minutes into. We may have a, a separate topic about it or a separate conversation. My apologies. Uh, there are some time constraints. I like to keep those sessions uh, at about 45 minutes or less. Uh, and I'll be happy to share about the Tampa project when it becomes more relevant. It will take some time. Um, okay, great. So I want to thank everyone for participating, for joining. Uh, if I see a lot of uh, Hebrew speakers on, on by names, if you wonder why I speak English and not not Hebrew, it's because this is open to the public. We have people from all over, all over, so to speak, uh, and many of them are not Hebrew speakers. So thank you for that understanding. Um, and if you joined uh, a little bit later. Uh, just go uh, and check the links that I put at the beginning of the comments, one for an ebook that we have, second one for a, a case study that we uh, just did with one of our investors on his experience. And if you wanna definitely talk to us, get in touch with me, Facebook, email, phone, text, WhatsApp, Skype, all works, no problem. Good, Nir, I'm gonna stop here because again, sorry, this is another topic. Um, uh, I wanna be, uh, wrap the session for today. We can, uh, you know what, we can actually take this topic and make another session about it uh, next week or the following. Uh, I appreciate that. We, we are here every week or trying to be here every week, every Friday, 11 a.m. Pacific time. I'm based in California, uh, 11 a.m. Pacific time. You're most welcome to join us. We are recording it on Facebook, it's going to go on YouTube, and it's going to go on a podcast. You're most welcome to use any of them. And if you're watching the recording, most welcome to place comments as well at that time when you're watching it. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a terrific weekend, rest of your day. Happy Friday. Happy Friday the 13th. Talk to you soon, I hope, in person. Have a terrific one. Thank you for the questions and your uh, participation. Bye-bye, everyone. Congratulations, you're one step closer to success in real estate investment. You've been listening to Real Estate Investing Talks with Danny Bate Orr. To learn how Simply Do It can guide you through the real estate investment process and achieve nationwide success, visit us on the web at simplydoit.net. Thanks for listening.